Augustine versus the Manichaeans. Let's go back and remember a little bit about the Manichaeans. We talk about them in History One, but we don't spend a ton of time on them. Um, I talk about them week two of History One, where I'm diving into uh, Gnosticism and different Gnostic faiths. Okay, so a little background then on the Manichaeans. The founder of Manichaeanism is Mani. Mani was a third century Persian prophet who wanted to gather the world's religions into one. He understood himself to be the final prophet in a long line of prophets, which included folks like Adam, Zoaster, Buddha, Jesus. Now, at this time, Zoroastrianism, which was a dualistic faith, um, was the primary faith in Persia. Though Christianity had made some inroads, Zoroastrianism is kind of the official faith of the Persian Empire, all right, um, which is where he's from. And you see significant influence there. Now, Manny um, was an excellent, excellent missionary and a coordinator of mission works. Um, so he has missionaries sent all over. Um, his works were translated into tons of different languages and the religion spread really, really fast. Eventually you could find Manichaean churches everywhere from Spain all the way to China. Now, <clears throat> I need to be really clear on this from the outset. Manichaeanism is not a sect of Christianity, nor is it like a Christian heresy. Um, rather, it is a different religion entirely that emerged more from Zoroastrianism, but included elements of other faiths. Now, due to the nature of Manichaeanism, uh, depending on the location, it could look pretty different. So in Christian areas, Manichaeanism actually might look more Christian than it would elsewhere, say. Um, and then just to highlight here that the faith is both Gnostic and dualistic. And I'll get into kind of how this plays out. So let's look at the Manichaean cosmology because um, this is really going to help us see what's going on here. All right. So in Manichaeanism, basically the universe is a cosmic wide struggle between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. All right. So you see, you see the dual, the dual nature here. Okay. Um, once these two kingdoms were separate realms, but the, the kingdom of darkness was drawn to the kingdom of light and invaded it. In response, God, or as the God figure is called, the father of greatness, evoked emanations of his own light and substance and sent one of them, called the primal man, to turn back the darkness. However, the darkness captured and imprisoned the primal man. Eventually, the man was rescued, but the material world was left in a mixture of light and dark. So this is very different than the Genesis account, right? All right, so in this kind of large battle, um, there, is the, there is a redemption arc to history. And this story really resonated deeply with people. Um, so within this framework, every single person carries a cosmic battle within themselves between, the, between goodness and evil. Um, there are sparks of the divine in us, but it is trapped. And it's Manny's teachings that open us up to the truth. Um, and there's really that Gnostic element there, right? Like special knowledge that opens you up to salvation. Okay, background over on Manichaeanism. So despite Augustine having grown up with a Christian mother, he does not accept Christianity for a number of reasons when he's young. But one of the biggest problems that he has with Christianity is the problem of evil. How can a good God allow evil in the world? Whew, and isn't that the question, folks? <laughs> anyway, Augustine converted to Manichaeanism when he was a student in Carthage. He stayed a Manichae for about nine years, he says. Um, <clears throat> though he says that he became very disillusioned with the Manichaeans, um, though he did keep some sort of relationship with them. Um, he said, I largely because of like connections and career opportunities and things like that. He doesn't actually make a full break with them until he moves to Milan and becomes more interested first in Neoplatonism and then Christianity. However, once Augustine converts to Christianity, he pens a number of works against the Manichaeans and publicly debates them as well. His writings aren't just polemical, he's really working out his own theology through these debates. Um, 
including things like the relationship between faith and reason, the origin and nature of evil, the freedom of the will, the goodness of creation, the relationship between the Old and the New Testaments, and the reality of the Incarnation. Now, some of these topics don't need that much explanation here. The Manichees, for example, view Jesus as some sort of prophet, but they rejected the Incarnation. They rejected the Old Testament. Remember, Manichaeanism is not Christianity. It's a different religion. Um, so you shouldn't be terribly surprised that they did this. However, in his um, debates with them, he, he does work out some of his own theology in these areas anyway. I do want to highlight a couple of themes here that are pretty important, though, related to his debates with the Manichaeans, specifically the problem of evil and free will. So first, the problem of evil. For the young Augustine, the Manichaeans offered what seemed to be an easy answer to the problem of evil. Evil came from a separate realm, and God was not responsible for it. Okay? That takes care of the problem seemingly for Augustine. How can God allow, how can a good God allow evil in the world? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't have control over it. It's from a separate realm. Okay. Eventually, though, Augustine comes to reject this because this viewpoint implies that God was not all-powerful. God would have been corruptible and changeable if this were the case. Whereas Augustine eventually came to see evil not as a thing in itself, but as nothing or an unmaking of the good that God has made. Okay, let me repeat that. For Augustine, evil is an unmaking of the good that God has made. This sounds a little confusing, but the general idea is that without an author, as he calls it, evil cannot happen. And asked who the author of evil is, Augustine says that there is no one answer. Each evil person is the author of his or her own misdeeds. I think closely related to the problem of evil for Augustine is the issue of free will then. Um, now his views on free will change a bit through his lifetime, um, but he uh, is always committed to some sort of freedom of the will. Augustine is not a Calvinist, okay? I, I want to be very clear on that. And you will read more on free will in later weeks, um, but for right now I just want to mention this briefly because I think it pertains to this topic pretty well. For Manichees, there is a level of determinism in their theology. They saw the physical world as this battleground between good and evil, and the evil is within us, like physically, literally in our bodies. Okay, Augustine, by contrast, affirmed only the body's goodness, kind of as the Genesis account, and the freedom of the will. It is our will, not our bodies, that are the source of evil. So he's really rejecting that Gnostic kind of matter is evil aspect here. Okay. All right. Um, that's where I'm going to wrap this up here. As I said, we're going to pick up some of these themes in later weeks, especially the issue of freedom of the will. All right. Thanks, everybody.